Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about stoichiometry involving enthalpy changes, stoichiometry involving delta H. So suppose we had some propane in a propane gas cylinder like the one shown in this image and we're going to use it to fire up our gas grill to make steaks, ribs, burgers, chicken, or whatever else we want if we have a big barbecue or something like that. And we have a certain amount of propane and we want to figure out how much heat we can get out of that uh, to heat up and cook our food. Well, we can use stoichiometry. So typically with stoichiometry, what you would do is you would have one reactant or product. Let's say you have a certain amount of a reactant and you want to know how much product you can get out of it. Well, you would use stoichiometry and your biggest tool is going to be the balanced chemical equation to allow you to convert from the moles of one reactant or product to the moles of another reactant or product. And we're going to do conversions that are very, very similar, only uh, we're going to sort of apply delta H in the mix. So if we take a look at the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane, well, we have propane reacting in the presence of oxygen to produce CO2 and water, and notice that those coefficients are 1, 5, 3, and 4 for propane, oxygen, CO2, and water respectively. And then notice also that we have this delta H value that is shown. It's minus 2044 kilojoules. So what does that mean? How do we use that to figure out how much heat's going to be given off uh, when we burn a given amount of propane, for instance? Well, the thing about enthalpy changes, the thing about delta H, is that it is what we call an extensive property. It's an extensive property, which means that it depends on the amount of matter. So in other words, a thousand grams of propane is going to release a lot more energy than just one gram of propane. So we need to find a way to turn this extensive property into an intensive property that does not depend on the amount of matter. And this is pretty easy as long as we recognize that this value is reported um, such that the reaction is occurring as written on a molar basis. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that if we have one mole of propane reacting with five moles of oxygen to make three moles of CO2 and four moles of water, then we are going to get 2044 kilojoules released into the surroundings during this process. So we can use that delta H value uh, along with the coefficients for the balanced chemical equation to convert back and forth between moles of any of these reactants or products and the amount of heat that's going to be given off. So for instance if I want to figure out how much heat's going to be given off when I have a given amount of propane, I would use this relationship, one mole of propane, and again that one mole comes from the understood coefficient of one coming from that balanced chemical equation. It's going to be one mole of propane is equivalent, stoichiometrically equivalent, to minus 2044 kilojoules. And so I can use this relationship to convert either from moles of propane to the amount of energy given off or from the amount of energy given off back to moles of propane. Uh, suppose I get a certain amount of water produced from the reaction. I measure how much water I get and I want to figure out how much energy must have been released to make that much water. Again, I would use the coefficient in front of water which is 4 and so I'd have 4 moles of water is stoichiometrically equivalent to minus 2044 kilojoules. So again, in both of these cases, all we're doing is we are equating the coefficient in front of the reactant or product to the amount of energy that's going to be given off. And so let's go ahead and do a problem where we apply this knowledge that we've just learned. So this problem says how much energy is released when 11.22 grams of water is produced via the combustion of propane. So again, we're going to use our balanced chemical equation that we just saw in the previous slide along with the delta H value, the negative 2044 kilojoules. And so we start out with our 11.22 grams of water. And what we need to do is we need to convert that into moles because again, the mole is the unit that is compatible with the balanced chemical equation. It doesn't say anything about mass, it's talking about moles. And so we can easily do this by using the molar mass of water, which is 18.015 grams per mole. The mass of water is on the bottom. The amount of moles, uh, the amount of water in moles is going to be on the top. And again, that number has been obtained from the periodic table by adding together the molar masses of two hydrogens and one oxygen. 
And now that we have the amount of water in moles, we can use the relationship that is inherent within the chemical equation and the delta H value. It's going to be 4 moles of water to minus 2044 kilojoules. And again, before we go reaching for that calculator, we want to make sure that all of our units except for kilojoules cancel. So it looks like grams of water are going to cancel. And it also looks like moles of water are going to cancel. So essentially, it's 11.22 times minus 2044 divided by 18.015. And we're going to take this to, it looks like, four significant figures. And so after crunching that into the calculator, rounding it to four sig figs, your final answer is going to be negative 1,273 kilojoules. So that is how you use stoichiometry and sort of invoke delta H into the mix, figuring out how much energy is released in the event of an exothermic process or absorbed in the event of an endothermic process based on how much of any reactant that you have or any product that you get out of the reaction. I hope you found this video helpful and or interesting and uh, I guess I will see you next time. So take care.